Hey folks, this is Ben Gessel. How's it going? Uh, I'm just making some quick video here tonight. Uh, it's going to be a pretty busy rest of the week, by the way. Just the way sometimes these things happen. Hopefully that, hopefully tomorrow will be doable. You know, we'll be able to get everything done and get done. I'm going to fix my piano, digital piano a little bit. Anyway, I wanted to talk about an actor who I knew about mainly because he was uh, on Mr. Mom and also Clue. And this actor's name is Martin Mull. Martin Mull, whatever. It's, it sounds like Mull, like M-O-L-L, -L, but it's actually M-U-L-L. -L. So Martin Mull. And he's that blonde-haired guy that plays uh, the mustache. He always has his mustache. He, so he played Colonel Mustard in the, in the movie Clue with... Uh, Christopher Lloyd and uh, Michael McLean, Michael McKean and uh, and uh, Alan Kahn and you no, know, I don't know some other guys. Anyway, and he's also was that you know womanizer, lascivious uh, boss, Mr. Mom. So you know it's the funniest thing because <sighs> before I was born, not too far. I mean it was. Barely, it was like a year before I was born, and thereabouts, maybe a little bit before that. But so yet, so Mart Martin, there's so many things about Martin Mull that I, I just never knew about, because of course this is a little bit before my time. I was, you know, what you what can you remember when you're, if you're a, a toddler, what you know, a baby toddler, even as a boy. I mean, like, so I saw his '80s stuff, but. Yeah. Nothing from the seventies, you know. There's a whole bunch of stuff I never saw that I just never saw. And so he has this show that he did. I think it's called it's not, Fleetwood Mac is a rock name. It's it's on YouTube. It's like Fleetwood something or something like that. Anyway, and so Martin's also he's a musician and he's an artist. He's a painter. And he's a lot of different things he's great at. And he's also a comedian. He's a really funny guy. He's an actor, as you know. All the stuff. I always sensed that Martin was um, pretty sharp. He, I mean, he was, he was smart. And um, he always had those funny expressions. You know, he did those um, winces. He would do, or, you know, the, the, the knowing half smiles. And. and and that was Martin Mull, but he was, you know, you can kind of tell he's a really great guy. Um, he, he, you know, he's the kind of person, actually, Martin is the kind of person that once you kind of get more of a feeling of what he's really like, you, you actually do want to get to know him better. So, I mean, that's a, that's a good thing. Right? So he actually is a really, really cool guy. He's a great guy. But sure, I mean, because he's very smart and he's very good with um, facial expressions that way. Not 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 extreme, not extreme facial. He doesn't do slapstick like Jim Carrey. You know, he's different. But but it's that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just. <laughs> yeah, you just you know. He's able to capture a moment with a facial expression. I'll put it that way. He's that kind of guy. Um, very well. I think John Belushi was similar, but Belushi had this charisma that I just was saying. Anyway, so so there's this these movies that they that they made him and uh, Fred Willard. Everybody see everybody knows Fred Willard. I think all younger folks mainly know Fred Willard because oh he was the the boss in Anchorman and Anchorman 2. But, you know, definitely as people older than, older than me, you know, that would probably know Fred from this other show that he was on with Martin Mull. And so these guys were good friends and they would, and I, I just, I just, until you know, you know, you know, I never knew this stuff. Um, so I think that there's this movie that was made, this is way back in like the, early 80s well no it's mid 80s I guess yeah mid 80s and 
I'm probably going to butcher the name of it, but it's like, it, it's a history of white people. No, that's, I'm butchering the name of it, but, or history of, but it's, it's it actually is satire. It's not serious. It's not meant to be taken seriously. It's, it's just, they're just goofing on white culture and just, you know, but with a lot of satire, you know, because I think the most effective satire is a satire that has a lot of truth to it. It just also is really effective in regard to how biting the humor is. How, you know, yeah. But I have to recommend you guys to watch this. This is just look at Martin Mole and like history of white Americans or something. Um, and there's like a few different things that they touch on, and they kind of it kind of goes after the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant type. But when I say Protestant, I mean, I do mean Protestant, um, religious, um, you know, the nuclear family, but it's more the, um, the dad who works a not fun job and he is often overworked and he's trying to go to church. He's trying to, you know, be a good dad and, and just dealing with life, and so it's it's not like he's it's not like it isn't always like it's not like uh, they're poking fun at the dad. It's it's actually you know you get kind of sympathetic. You feel sympathetic toward him, you know. And it, it, it's light. It's it's the situations are comical. You know, you can't help but laugh sometimes. And, you know, there's a variety of different things in it. It's you know has some depth to it, but it's. It's a little bit over the top. It's it's kind of like all the behaviors, so many behaviors that you see in you know white suburban America is is a kind of uber concentrated. <laughs> yes, from the food. <sighs> the potato salads and the mayonnaise, and, you know, cheese and all that stuff. So all the type of food. White people, according to Dave Chappelle, you know, you know, you know that whole thing. To um, again, you know, Christian or Protestant life, <sighs> and um, yeah, it's always some crossover with other stuff. I see a lot of crossover in my own church sometimes because we're white in the United States, or Catholics somewhat. Or, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of crossover, but it's the church going stuff. These you know, they also there's an episode they have about crime, which is kind of more goofy, and you know, it's it's anyway. They, they were kind of I, I can kind of tell what they're going after there, but it I thought it wasn't the most effective one. But and then there was one about stress. For me personally, though, the stress and the religion segments were the ones that I was like, oh, it's kind of heading home a bit more for me, like personally a little bit um, because we all get stressed out so we often wonder what are we going to do when we snap you know There's things you never want to do when you get really super stressed out or whatever it is um, so there's, there's that it's understandable but I, I think we have our limits you know But and there's the religion thing was weird because um Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's it's like this thing that we all experience in life where we're trying to be good people and we still mess up, you know, and, and how, how, you know, but there's kind of the, the Protestantisms, you know, the things that you kind of see amongst ministers and people that go to church and it, it definitely, for me, it, it was... It was pretty savage <laughs> going after. Her. Yep, white conservative Protestant type, you know, society. <laughs> so, a, a society I've tried my best to get along with, you know, and often, often feel very kin to, very close to, you know, it's very similar to Mormons, you know, really in many respects. But I've tried my best to get along with the element of, of this sort of thing that is not always as friendly toward my church but 
but I can identify identify with this group very much in so many respects. You know, this this is a lot, a lot of these folks are folks I grew up with. But um, it, it's really funny though. But it's you know, as Martin mentioned at the very beginning of this whole thing, it's like, well, you know. Either I'll enjoy it, or well, you know, probably end up seeing something else. Basically, <laughs> so it's like until that, you know, in the comment section of of that movie or movies, there's a few of them, you know, a few segments of it. There's, there's like a part two, which is all the different four parts I mentioned. There's a part one that's I think a shorter version, or I don't know, different. But in the comment section, I'm not saying this is necessarily the case so much with these movies, but obviously you guys know what I'm about probably to say, maybe not. Um, it's common, it's often observed on YouTube, albeit a lot of people that make comments on YouTube are probably juvenile, it's true. But it's been observed that um, this is across the whole, like, seeing all this old stuff and how everything was the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and the 90s and 2000s. The subject of race, for the most part, is steadily getting more and more taboo to joke about. Right? Or it's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> People get worked up about it these days. You know, but that's how everybody's trying so hard to not be racist, or that's it's a big deal. Right? Being racist is a really big deal. Okay, you know, <laughs> and if us are saying otherwise, it's just yeah. <sighs> in the eighties, you could have something like this come out, and everyone, people say this over and over again. Oh, you could never have a movie like that made these days. I would just, oh man, you know, be too controversial. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's more like everybody's on edge these days. Everybody's just looking for a fight, or a lot of people are. So this is why we miss earlier times. It seemed nicer, gentler, you know, less like a constant battle. It literally feels like a battle these days. I don't know. Anyway, it's just nice to be able to joke about this stuff that is like, oh, this is obviously just <sighs> wasp, waspish culture, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant culture, right? In, in general, it, it, some of it's really funny because of the way that this culture that I somewhat identify with, sure, but the way that this culture handles subjects like sex uh, or, you know, and family relationships and church and politics and work stress and balancing everything in life and um, the law and stuff. But there's a lot of certain things that, you know, you're like, oh, this person reminds me of this person I know. Or this is such a shallow you know, thing, or the whole thing about, and the, yeah, this is a cro this is not just, this is, this behavior is very much a very white Christian thing, and especially in the United States. You know, you get people that go to church that are dressed so well. They, they look sharp and amazing. And they're really nice, expensive suits and dresses. You know, and they, maybe they're very well behaved at church, and they are just, wow, you know, but, you know, and this whole movie pokes fun of that stuff, you know, and the Sunday Christian thing, right, yeah, so, so some of it digs, some, some of it digs a little deeper, so it's a bit more off the wall, I suppose, but it's worth seeing, this, this movie, um, but a lot of stuff with even back to Martin Mull, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff that he's done that we just don't know about because we just don't know about it unless we, we go, oh yeah, he's like Mystery Mom, oh yeah, he was in Clue, and we, we think that 
you know, because he's played, he's played chauvinistic guys that, you know, that's one of the characters he's played. He really is a, um, a great, great guy. And he's, he's getting old now, I think. He's an old guy now. But, but anyway, if you guys have time, check out that stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, but it's just, you know, I don't know. I sometimes feel like an idiot for not knowing about these things in the past. But he's largely before my time. But not that. He was pretty cool. And he's still alive now. He's just... Um, anyway. <laughs> these sorts of things bring more perspective. You know, you kind of make the 70s come alive more. The more that you see this old stuff you know, on YouTube, the more you're like, oh, so... This is what was going on, you know. I've been watching Dick Cavett for a while, you know. Seeing all these uh, terracotta, yeah, terracotta colored uh, suit coats and pants, and you know what I'm talking about, just the 70s colors and <laughs> the 70s hairstyles. We can, we, can make, we can make fun of it, sure, the bell bottoms, but there's a part of me that, that likes the 70s. I, I always like the 70s, but it, I always will, but it's um, it's very different than the 80s, it's true. And the 80s are different than the 90s, the 90s, and the, the 2000s and 2010s, to me, don't seem as distinctive. But maybe with time I'll see it. They all kind of just, 2000s and 2010s, or maybe the 2010s are different. I think 2010s are different. I don't know. Okay. All right, I'll catch you later. Take care. Bye.